Hey everyone, welcome to an interview with the founder of Vendor, Michael. Uh, we're going to be talking about why he came up with this project, how what his journey has been, and why it's awesome, and also the integration with View Storefront. That's going to be, I think, it is live by now. Uh, to join joining us, we have Jacob, core VSF team member. Uh, he's also the core maintainer of the integration between View Storefront and Ninja. And obviously, we have the founder of Vendor themselves, Michael. And I'll be just asking some questions along the way on Hotwise Commerce. Quick note about me, we are an omni-channel order management system for Shopify. I'm also a core team member of Storefront UI. Uh, and why don't we just get started right away? Jacob, why don't you first just introduce quickly what is View Storefront so people who might be out of context just can get familiar. Sure. So View Storefront is a head is a platform, front end platform for headless e-commerce. We used to call it a bodyless front end so that it can connect to any front end on to any back end that you like. So in here, for example, in our uh, portfolio page, you can see that View Storefront can connect to all different e-commerce platforms, headless CMS payments, any third party service. And one integration, one e-commerce platform that we can integrate now View Storefront is the venture that Michael is the founder of and will be uh, talking about today. So I'm passing voice again to the studio. My Michael Aditya talk a bit more about Venture itself. Yeah, so I think now is a good time to just get into Venture and what's going on with uh, you guys, what are you working on? So why don't you give us a quick introduction of what it is and then we'll dive deeper into the subtopics. Sure, yeah. So Venture is, as you see here on the homepage, it's a headless uh, e-commerce framework based on TypeScript and Node.js. It uses GraphQL, so um, it's, um, a, a tech stack which has not really been well represented for uh, in you know in the area of uh, uh, e-commerce like open source e-commerce frameworks. I've been working on it for about three and a half years now. Uh, mm -hmm. It's now stable. It's used in production by many companies. Um, yeah, let's have a look down the homepage. Uh, it's uh, makes a, it gives a priority to like developer productivity. So it tries to make mm -hmm. it tries to make it easy to customized to like the specific business requirement projects that you're working on. And mm -hmm. being headless, it relies on uh, a front end application such as View Storefront. So the, the, so the, um, the selling point of a headless architecture is that you can use any kind of front end. You're free to be totally in control. You're not constrained by the platform that you're working with. So this is um, what Avenger offers. Cool. So, you know, you mentioned a couple of different things, some interesting technologies that you're using, and we're also seeing that on the screen right now. But I guess what we're here to talk about specifically is how and why you decided view, how you got to view storefront and why view storefront is a good choice to use with Vendor. Yeah. So um, headless has got this, as I just mentioned, the advantage is that you're not constrained on the front end. It's a double edged sword because, uh, it does mean that then you got to build the storefront. It's not like something with like Shopify or BigCommerce where out of the box you've got uh, a storefront that, that's already kind of ready to go. So uh, projects like View Storefront really step in and, and are solving that part of the equation and uh, making it, lowering the barrier to, to get started with like a really nice storefront and headless architecture. Right. And speaking speaking of those themes, I just uh, just connects nicely with, I think recently View Storefront just launched a View Storefront projects kind of repository. So speaking of Shopify is great because you get those themes. So getting access to all those View Storefront themes to use with a vendor platform like Vendor is what's great about basically connecting yourself with that kind of community. Yeah. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to say um, also that I was, yeah, <laughs> was going to say, um, the tech stack is as well is like uh, you know very close. You know, if you build in on View Storefront, you're using the whole npm JavaScript TypeScript ecosystem, so um, it's familiar to developers to use both sides. You know, both the the full stack in one language and one ecosystem. Right, and as different headless platforms are emerging in the market as like the next landmark technology, they all have reasons for 
or people that they want to solve problems for? So is there like a certain community or type of uh, agency that you have in mind that would really benefit most from vendor? Uh, yeah, from my experience, it's, uh, th there's a, a segment who are like, they've outgrown Shopify, maybe, or they, they have particular custom requirements, which are difficult to implement in, in a lot of these SaaS platforms. Um, or they have particular needs about like ownership of the data, ownership of the platform. Um, and uh, I've got a bunch of other projects who, who want to implement kind of marketplace type of uh, functionality. And uh, all, all of these are very well suited to Venger because it's very extensible. So you mentioned extensible. Uh, so that's really interesting. So do you have like scenarios that you found yourself limited by other platforms that you found that you were able to solve by coming up with Venger? Like what kind of extensions were you able to more easily come up with? Yeah. So one nice thing about having a self-hosted solution like Venger is that um, you're not you're not really constrained by... Uh, the kind of API, the app type of API um, that give you maybe webhook access and, and certain bits of access to, to the kind of the whole commerce flow. So when you write extensions in Venger, you're really writing um, code which, which will run on the server in the same process with full access to the database, full access to like all the events going on in the system. So you can write very, very deep integrations uh, and, and, and there's very, you know, there's very little that you you can't do, um, and I've, just, I've tried to design it in a way where it's kind of uh, gives you the hooks to be able to implement your own integrations when you need it. Mm -hmm. And do you have like any other things that you feel like people who've been using platforms like Magento, who have been like the previous open source ecom platform kings, that like as those have shown their age, what is some of the stuff that people can look forward to in using a platform other than like, as you mentioned, extensibility? Yeah, I, I guess uh, they can use like more easily use modern developer workflows, you know, mm -hmm. um, modern uh, front end technologies, uh, the dev uh, experience and the iteration cycle is very fast, you know, nice. uh, like making changes and like, you know, rerunning Developer things. Developer experience is very important too. Yeah, like specifically, yeah. like a lot of people don't seem to really think about that because this happens from a business first perspective. Mm -hmm. But being someone that comes from a developer first and focuses on that experience is something that I feel like it's going to be really popular with the enthusiast community, especially that's going to then expand out to all of their customers, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, I, I do keep my eye on like like the the Magento subreddit and different e-commerce mm -hmm. forums where developers go and bitch about things, and uh, it does it, you know the, the the developer experience is important and it makes a big difference on whether people are willing to use it or or how much you have to pay them to use it. Maybe is right. more more of a business uh, um, kind of consideration, and and also like the time to market because if it takes like you know, five minutes every time you make a change to refresh it in the browser, then, you know, that adds up over time. Mm -hmm. So have you ever, what do you have, like, as maybe you've, like, jotted down the specific Reddit posts of, like, this is the stuff that I want to change. So, like, what, what are those kind of developer experiences? Do you have I, I, I actually, like, when I started the project, I uh, kept a little um, bookmark folder called Lurking, where I lurk about <laughs> on these forums and just save all of these kind of, rants about the pain points that the developers have had with other platforms um you know it's not something that I've, i felt like i should share because maybe it's not it's not fair but i uh, there is a lot of material back, <laughs> backing up my decisions <laughs> yeah i don't know like a lot of companies like to have frequently asked questions on their website maybe you can have like frequently bitched about problems on the software. <laughs> And in terms of extendability and customizability, uh, which is interesting part between uh, View Storefront and Venger, that they share um, similar patterns in terms of customizability. Because in Venger, uh, you have these custom fields that allow you to uh, customize what you are fetching from the database. And it's quite similar on the View Storefront part, because you can use uh, custom queries instead of the default queries that are uh, provided by View Storefront to uh, fetch different data. So the, both projects share um, quite few similarities. 
and also in the architecture, I would say, because when you look at what what is the technology stack, so when you look at Venger, you will see that Venger is built on Nest.js, which is like a framework for Node.js, mm -hmm. and it adds uh, an architecture, plugins, features. So it is like um, a framework that allows you to develop projects more efficiently than yeah. by using, for example, Node.js. And in terms of view storefront, it's quite similar because we are using Nuxt.js, which is like a framework for Vue.js. So you can also use the stuff from Vue.js in Nuxt, but Nuxt gives you a bit of architecture, gives you support for, uh, for server-side rendering. So we also have those additions that uh, make your developer experience better. So both this project and both projects are open source as well. So mm -hmm. the both yeah. projects share very, very many similarities, I would say. Yeah. So uh, because these projects share quite few similarities, we thought about uh, integrating them into one so that you can choose a Venger as a backend of your e-commerce and view storefront as your front end. So we created this integration that you can visit in our docs, so docs view storefront io slash venger, uh, where you have the instructions on how you can build your store with venger. So we have getting started, how to install it, how to configure venger to work with uh, view storefront. And we have also information about composables, theme, also in integration. This is like a recent thing. Uh, we had a talk with uh, the guys from Storyblock about the integration between view storefront venger and Storyblock. So it, we are working uh, on it. It's, it's like in progress. So uh, we, we will have the integration with CMS ready as well in the upcoming uh, releases. Nice. So that concludes our interview with Michael from Vendor. Uh, for the documentation on the integration and the integration itself, we'll link all of that stuff in the description below. And if you're interested in finding out more and connecting with Michael to learn about Vendor, there's a dedicated channel in the View Storefront Discord where you can go and just straight up message him directly and find out more. Uh, hope you, hopefully you guys found this informative and maybe you'll go check out the Vendor View Storefront integration. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.